In today's video, we're going to talk about Selenium's expected conditions. Selenium's expected conditions are a set of predefined conditions that you can use to wait for specific events or states to occur within a web page when automating browser interactions. They are part of the Selenium WebDriver framework and are useful for synchronizing your test script with the web application's behavior. Using expected conditions can help ensure that your automation script interacts with elements on the page only when they are in the desired state, such as clickable, visible, or present. So in Python, to use expected conditions in Selenium, you have to import the following, um, WebDriver support wait, uh, WebDriver wait, uh, and you also have to import expected conditions as you see right here. Some conditions that you can wait for, uh, or some expected conditions include title is, so the title of the web page, URL to be what URL, uh, visibility of element, whether the element is visible or not, whether the element is clickable or not, uh, text to be, which is the text on the web page, and element to be selected, which includes uh, what elements uh, are selected. So in the next part of this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this in your own project. And so I'm opening up a project from before, and I'm just going to go ahead and create a new text script right here by right clicking test folder, new Python. And I'm going to name it test underscore selenium underscore expected conditions. conditions. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import all of the dependencies and packages that we require. So the first thing, uh, I'm just going to copy and paste it over and I'll show you uh, what we're using. So importing time, PyTest, WebDriver. Um, we'll be using action chains in this uh, tutorial, so I'm going to import action chains right here. I'm also importing WebDriver wait, which we'll be using as well, and expected condition right here. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to specify our Chrome driver. So go ahead and I'm going to copy over and paste this. So I'm using a Pytex fixture tag right here, and I'm just specifying the Chrome driver right here. So I have a Chrome driver right here. I'm maximizing the window, and then I'm yielding the driver. OK, so now let's move on into the test. So I'll be going through four different tests uh, in today's video. Um, and let's start with the first one. So this first one, I'm going to just name it test one. It's going to be until page title. So I'm passing my Chrome driver. This is capital KC. And then I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do a few things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to visit this web page right here. And then we're just going to sleep for three seconds. After we visit that web page, let's, um, let's specify a few things. So I'm going to say that um, this image right here, uh, using this X path, I'm going to specify it as image, and I'm going to wait for 18 seconds using the web driver wait. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to say uh, we're going to wait until uh, this uh, is visible. So this image is visible, and then um, we're going to see if the expected condition for um, title is home page. And then we're going to print the title of the actual web page. And so let me show you what this does. If I go ahead and run this, drag this over. So it waits for the image. You see, it just waited for the image to load. And then uh, it was uh, looking for the expected title. Um, but let's say what it prints. So it prints the title as homepage ADM Lucid right here. So it waited also until the title was homepage ADM Lucid, and then it printed the title. So in this, we look for two wait conditions, uh, two expected conditions. First, that the image is visible, and second, that the title of the web page is homepage ADM Lucid, and then we printed the Chrome title. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. We'll show you some other things we can do. So Let's show, uh, so name the sec one test two until selected. And again, what we're going to do is we are going to visit this web page right here. We're going to wait for three seconds and then we're going to wait 10 seconds 
Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to click this checkbox right here. And we named it, uh, we found the, uh, the ID of the checkbox. So we're going to click that. And then we're going to do a few things. Uh, actually, we're, uh, we're going to specify that checkbox. We're not going to click it quite yet. Uh, we're going to first, we're going to see if this checkbox has been clicked. And it's gonna wait for this. Uh, it's gonna wait for this condition, but it's not gonna satisfy it. So it's gonna give us the checkbox is not selected. After this try accept statement, we're gonna click the checkbox and then we're gonna check again. This time, we'll see that the checkbox is clicked and the expected condition is fulfilled. And so we're gonna print the checkbox is selected. Um, so let me show you this. We'll go ahead and run this. And we're waiting for 10 seconds. And then it should click the checkbox on this row right here. So there, you see it clicked. And there we go. So we see from the output, the checkbox is not selected in the first run. And then the second run, the checkbox is selected as we expected. Um, now let's move on to our next one. So we're going to make another test. Um, and this test uh, right here. We're going to call it test three. Test three until clickable. Pass the Chrome driver again, and we're going to do a few things. So we're going to visit this web page, wait for three seconds, and then wait for five seconds, and then we're going to define a few things. First, we're going to define this button. And then we're also going to define the footer. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use actions chains. And this is why I said action chains are necessary for this tutorial. So we're going to use action chains and we're going to scroll to the footer and we're going to do that. And then we're going to click the button. So this makes sure that we scroll all the way down to the web page, a bottom of the web page, and then clicks the button. And what this button does, let me show you, is that this button is basically disabled for 15 seconds. So when you click it, it'll be disabled for 15 seconds. So we'll click the button. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll do a try accept statement. And let me show you. Right here, we'll wait uh, until, uh, and then we're gonna use the expected condition. We're gonna say that the button, uh, we're gonna see if the button is clickable. If it is clickable, we're going to print the button is clickable. And if it's not, we'll print the button is not clickable. So let me show you what happens here. Go ahead and drag this over. So I'm not going to touch it. It scrolls down automatically and it clicks it. And then it'll print the button is not clickable right here. And that's because we click the button, right? Um, and the button is disabled. But now, if we use the wait statement and we wait 20 seconds instead, let's see what happens. Go ahead and drag this over. So we'll let it scroll down by itself. It clicks the button. And there we go. It'll stay that the button is clickable. And that's because we waited for 20 seconds. And after 20 seconds, uh, the button, which was originally disabled from this click, is now re-enabled. And so the button is clickable. OK, let's move on to the next test. We'll call this test 4 until alerts close. And in this one, I'll show you what we'll do again. So in the beginning, let's uh, do this. We will first visit this web page right here. We'll wait for three seconds. And then we'll define this button, and then we'll click the button. And then we'll wait for five seconds. And then after we do that, what we will do is uh, we will uh, use a try accept statement. And we're going to say that if there is an alert present, then we'll print the pres alert is present. And if not, alert is not present. And so let's go ahead and run this. Drag this over. 
and we will see that it will actually click button one right here and then it creates an alert so the alert is present but if we go ahead and comment on this button one right here and we run this again it will not click button one and so we see no alerts present and after a while it'll say the alert is not present uh, and okay so let's move on to our final test um, this is test number five and this is until new window we pass in chrome again and what we'll say is we will tell it to um, visit this web page right here uh, and sleep for three seconds and then what we will do is let's tell it to do this so we'll tell it to find this element right here and then click it and then wait for five seconds and what this does is it should open a new tab in the web page uh, and then what we will do is we will check this so we'll say number of windows to be is two uh, and the second window is open or if it doesn't open a new tab then the second window is not open so go ahead and run this we see it visits this web page and then it'll click a button and then it opens a new tab and now we see that this expected condition is fulfilled and so it prints the second window is open but yeah so that's our video today about expected conditions in selenium using python if you found this video helpful, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to seeing you next time.